So uh, thanks for coming to this uh, session. Uh, this is a joint paper with my colleague uh, Ido Khan. We're both at the Hebrew University, the Department of Agriculture, Economics and Management. I'm currently visiting the Rin Institute in Japan, Research Institute for Humanity and Nature. And uh, actually, it is they, they, they encouraged me to go back to this project, which is somewhat dormant for uh, a couple of years. And uh, this conference came at the right at the same time. So everything's perfect. Paper is not completely ready yet, but uh, I think we, complete, we accomplished uh, quite, uh, quite a lot of it. So what we're going to do in this paper is, is look at climate change and how it affects the agricultural sector, but mostly through farmers' behavior. And uh, we allow farmers' behavior to then affect uh, the supply of agricultural sector, and then uh, the supply fe effect feeds back into an equilibrium model that will change the prices, and then farmers see different prices, and then they re react ag again. So there's kind of a circle of action that goes from farmers to prices until you get a new equilibrium. Now, this is not a general equilibrium model. We only look at the agricultural sector, so it's only a, uh, we only look at fresh produce uh, market and assume that the rest of the economy uh, is, not, is not affected. And in the paper, there's some discussion about the, uh, the reasons for this, uh, for this assumption. So uh, let me start by uh, talking a little bit about the methodology that, uh, that we use and how it is placed in the general uh, literature uh, on this topic, and then I will uh, move to the application to uh, the Israeli agriculture. So in terms of uh, uh, how the literature uh, developed uh, with modeling uh, climate change, the uh, earlier attempts have been uh, classified as production uh, approach, which is uh, maybe using laboratory experiments or, or some other observations to to, to, to realize how uh, uh, yields, for example, are affected by climate change. And the previous presentation perhaps was a good example of this, uh, this kind of literature. And now, and of course now it is expanded and, and the people are using this in the context of general equilibrium model. But this, mod this uh, approach was criticized by the Ricardian approach by saying that farmers actually mitigate some of these changes by changing their, their behavior. So the Ricardian approach would say, let's look at farmers' behavior and how it affects output or profits or land values. So the Ricardian approach, in fact, looks at the opposite direction where they don't model farmers' decisions, but they look at the, at the final outcome. And the final outcome is the profits. So, um, uh, but then, of course, it, does not, it cannot be used to tell anything about the supply of agricultural products or prices or anything like that. All I can tell is whether farmers benefit from cl climate change or not and to what extent. Now, the integrated approach is trying to put everything together, both looking at the effect of climate change on, on, on agricultural uh, outcomes, but also taking into account uh, farmers' behavior and also taking into account the, the market approach, the market clearing uh, situation in which uh, prices uh, respond to the uh, changes uh, in supply. And uh, this is where our uh, uh, methodology uh, fits. And uh, so in particular, we will look at the direct and indirect effect of climate change on agriculture. First of all, there's the direct effect. Cli uh, farmers see that uh, climate uh, or, or some, some indicators of climate are changing and they're changing their behavior. In our case, we model the crop uh, mix, uh, what crops are they cultivating and how they allocate the land uh, between uh, the crops, between the, those crops. And then, of course, this will affect the aggregate uh, uh, supply and uh, uh, this will affect the market price of uh, these crops, and then this feedbacks into the farmer's decision, and that ends in the new uh, equilibrium. So the, the literature um, that, uh, that we, we look at is, um, perhaps it's based on an earlier uh, paper by several of my colleagues that is forthcoming in the American Journal of Agricultural Economics. They use the structural model to look at farmers' uh, cropland uh, location, as a response to uh, climate change. It was a regional um, uh, data that they used, so they uh, looked at the Israeli data and differentiated by regions. And what we do is actually uh, um, go back to this, uh, to this uh, approach, but uh, change it in several directions. First of all, we add, we add the market uh, part of it, so we look at how prices ch uh, change. Second, we go to a more disaggregated level. We don't look at regions, we look at villages. Uh, we would like to look at, at, uh, at household level or farm level uh, data, but we don't have enough, good enough data. We look at villages and see to what extent the crop allocation, uh, cropland allocation is changing within the village. 
And in this context, we have to add the uh, corner solutions because not all of the crops are grown in all of the villages. So we look at also uh, what crops do you, uh, do you choose to, to grow and also how do you allocate the land between the crops that you choose to, uh, to grow. So uh, the, the general structure of the model is, is like that. Uh, if you look here, that's the, that's the farm decision uh, level. And it's made uh, according to the climate factors, to the output prices, and to uh, other production factors. And once you have the farmer's uh, decisions that, uh, uh, aggregate, that is aggregated to get the market supply, and then the market supply and the market demand interact in an equilibrium model that result in new prices that feed back into the farmer's decision. And for the demand uh, side, we use uh, elasticities that uh, were uh, found in a different uh, uh, project uh, that looked at uh, uh, demand for uh, fruits and vegetables. And this is how we, uh, we get the demand. And you can go further with that and, and, and estimate even the changes in consumer surplus and so forth. So uh, now going to the Israeli example, and first of all, I want to tell you why it is, uh, uh, Israel is an appropriate uh, case study for uh, studying this uh, phenomena. Well, Israel is a, is a very small country, but uh, quite diversified in uh, many aspects. One is the topography. We have the coastal plain that is uh, perhaps the most fertile uh, part of uh, the country, including perhaps the northern valleys, but it's also the most urbanized, so agriculture is slowly moving to other parts of the country, especially to the south and to the eastern valleys. The eastern valleys uh, enjoy um, temperatures that allow them to grow vegetables and the flowers to be sold in Europe uh, during the winter. They can get very good prices uh, for that. Of course, there's a problem of, of the, the climate and there's a problem of the soil and there's a problem of water, but technology is able to uh, uh, overcome some of these, of these problems. But in any case, we have very diverse uh, uh, conditions for uh, agriculture. We have a short uh, rainy season uh, and, and a long uh, dry uh, summer. So that also in, uh, uh, implies some uh, um, restrictions on uh, cultivation. And we have a lot of variation uh, of precipitation. In the north, we could go up to 1,200 millimeters uh, per year. And in the south, it's almost nothing. So uh, altogether, we have the topography and uh, precipitation and the soil types that I haven't mentioned, but also vary quite a lot. Quite a lot, And you get a very diversified agriculture sector within a very small region. So unlike Brazil, that you can look at regions here and there, and they could be affected differently by climate. In Israel, it, it's a small place, but still highly diversified. So what you can do is you can say, well, if climate changes, and now the conditions in the north are going to be the same as, or not now, but in 20 years, the conditions in the north are going to be the same as in now in the south, then you can say, OK, let's take a typical farm in the south. and you can, everything else equal, you can say that the uh, farmer in the north will adopt the same cultivation uh, practices and still, you know, be in the same uh, region so no other, no other things are, are changing. In terms of uh, the crop uh, portfolio, um, about a quarter of uh, agricultural production is, uh, is vegetables, another quarter is fruit. These two are exported in part, uh, mostly to Europe. We have about 35% uh, of uh, livestock products that are mostly for domestic uh, production. And we have some field crops, not, not a lot. We import most of our grains and some flowers and some other, um, some other niche, uh, niche markets that we, uh, we use. These are the forecasts of uh, climate change for, the, uh, for Israel. In particular, it's part of a larger Eastern Mediterranean uh, climate uh, change uh, um, forecast. And as you can see, uh, the temperature on the right are, are expected to rise. Precipitation is expected to fall, but with some variability over the years. I'll go back to this, to this later. Now, the temperature could bring, bring some benefits, because if, if we now grow vegetables in the south and sell to Europe in the winter, perhaps in the future we can do that also in the north. But then precipitation is going to be a problem, because uh, Israel is highly uh, irrigated, but the irrigation is coming from underground sources uh, that uh, need to be re replenished. So a uh, previous uh, research, I started, the, I, I presented one, one paper, but there's one paper uh, uh, in 2007 that uh, looks like a, a, at a macro level and uh, predicted that uh, uh, by 2100, year 2100, and uh, farm revenues will decrease uh, by 20% because of climate change. A uh, later paper in 2008 look, used the Ricardian approach and found some 
uh, more moderate uh, uh, um, changes uh, will be benefic beneficial, but more extreme will be uh, harmful to, for agriculture. And then the recent paper that I mentioned that is forthcoming also saw that there are some, some negative impacts on, on agriculture. So the data that we have are annual data from 793 communities. That's almost all agriculture communities uh, in Israel. We divide it into uh, the production into seven crop technology bundles. So we first divide the crops into uh, field crops, vegetables, and fruits. And then we divide each of them to field crops to irrigated and rain fed, uh, vegetables to open field and covered, and fruits to three uh, types of, of fruits. Uh, these are, this is the, uh, distribution of these communities across the country. Um, I have to go a little faster now because of time constraints. So these are the data just showing that uh, not all crops are cultivated in all, uh, in all uh, villages. So we have to care take care of these corner solutions. Most of the land is still uh, going to a field crop, although there is, uh, uh, the yield is quite low and the profitability is quite low, but the, the water constraint and other constraint dictate this, and this is go also going to be affected by uh, climate change. The climate data that we use is, uh, first of all, precipitation and its variability uh, over the years, and then degree days in various formats. Degree days is the number of degrees between 8 and 34 that you accumulate over a certain period, in this case a month. And uh, then we also look at extreme days, days uh, with more than 34 degrees and days below uh, 8 degrees, and these are going to affect different crops differentially. Uh, crop uh, prices, these are the index price index uh, over the sample years. They normally, uh, uh, I mean, the trend is, uh, is downwards, uh, but there's some variability and differences between uh, the different uh, four series that we have. Um, some of the uh, estimation results, we use the multivariate uh, Tobit for these seven equations with all the correlations. The correlation is significant, so it's important to account for them. And, and to account for the corner solutions. I'm not going to go into this, uh, just showing that the climate coefficients are mostly significant. And you can see different signs, so uh, because the land is, is, is given, so one crop is going down, another crop will go up, different signs. There, so th there is an effect of climate on farmers' decisions. Uh, now we simulate the model and use the, uh, also the demand side to simulate the prices. So um, we divide uh, the, the sample, this is the precipitation, just to show you, we divide the sample into four periods. The, the uh, green one is the, the base period and then three simulated uh, future uh, periods. And as you can see in the second period, we have some increase in precipitation and then we have a decrease in precipitation. That's going to affect the prices. This is how the climate variables uh, change uh, across the four different uh, periods. And as you, see, you can see, the most extreme changes percentage-wise is with the extreme temperatures above 34 and below 8. And this is going to have a major effect on the, on the results. Uh, demand functions, um, okay, I'll just, uh, you know, schematic, uh, schematic uh, uh, picture of uh, demand functions uh, where field crops are normalized to be one and are kept as one because we import field crops, so that's not getting affected by local production. And then we, we put a maximum price increase of 50% because we say if a certain price increase is more than 50%, we're going to import this from outside. This is kind of arbitrary, but we're going to check this uh, sensitivity or the results to, to this uh, constraint. So these are the forecasted prices. And you can see the price of vegetables is expected to rise to the maximum 50% that we allow. So we assume that in the future, Israel is going to import vegetables rather than export. There's also some increase in the price of fruit, but not as extreme, although we have these individual crops, then some of these prices are going to reach the 50%. So some of these fruits we're going to import, but on average, uh, fruits are, are going to be uh, uh, still uh, produced uh, in Israel. These are the land allocation predictions. And we, can, we compare the equilibrium model to a static model in which prices do not change. And as you can see in the static model, this is the, uh, this part of the model, you see uh, not not a lot of changes. We see some increase in vegetables, some decrease in, in field crops. But when you look at the equilibrium uh, uh, predictions, it's a totally different story. We see a, a large decline in the uh, cultivation of vegetables and an increase in the uh, cultivation of the land allocated to field crops. So there's a big difference between uh, a model which that uh, keeps the prices fixed and a model that allows the prices to change in an equilibrium <laughs> sense. So. Um, 
just uh, some aggregate uh, production statistics, as you see in the static model, production is supposed to increase. In the equilibrium model, production is expected to decrease. And now my time is up. So um, just to show you that um, because of the decrease in production, we're going to import some fruits and vegetables. But still, the quantity or the value of production and imports is going to, be, is going to decrease slightly over the years. So consumers are going to pay a double price. I mean, they're going to pay higher prices for the fruits and vegetables, and also the quantity or consumed will go down. So that's a major effect on welfare. So to summarize, um, our findings indicate, and as I said, this paper is not complete. We're going to go back to the empirical part and try to fine tune it. But there seems to be a, a considerable effect on climate change on agriculture in Israel. And if we ignore the equilibrium effect of supply on prices and the feedback effect on supply, we're going to get very different uh, expectations. And our methodology is uh, building on the existing uh, uh, studies by uh, adding the, this price effect and also by looking at a more disaggregate uh, disaggregated study in which you look at village level rather than on regional level and that's our uh, contribution. Thank you very much.